Hey everybody, this is Ken coming at you from the AT&T Wolfpack. And today, we're going to do a quick walk around and a what's in the box for the AT&T Motorola Moto X. So, just to begin, your standard box, okay? Motorola's uh, logo insignia is here. And we open it up. Uh, it's multicolored because... It represents all of the different colors variations that you can get the phone in when you customize it uh, on the Moto Customizer on their website. Okay, the first thing we have in the box here is the uh, Let's Get Started booklet. Okay, that's where your instructions are at, your uh, warranty and stuff like that. Um, you know, come standard with every phone. Some people use it and others... Uh, don't use it at all so uh, the other thing in the box is uh, your standard uh, micro USB uh, charging and data syncing uh, cord then we have here a standard USB wall wart pretty typical with any phone nowadays and then in this little packet here neatly tucked away is the uh, I call it the sim key so it is to pop open your uh, your sim card slot on your phone Okay, so that's what's inside the box. There's no headphones in the box. Didn't come with headphones. Most of the phones today don't come with any headphones at all. Um, so this is the phone. Let's lay it down for a moment. Um, this is uh, Google's first phone they put out with Motorola since they acquired the company, since everybody knows that probably already. Just thought I'd give a mention out to it again. Um, so we're basically going to start first from the back of the phone. Okay, back of the phone, you have a 10 megapixel shooter right there. And it's saddled with a, a single LED flash. Um, it's capable of shooting um, 1080p video. 60 frames per second with the back camera and it's 10 megapixel i just got the update uh this morning on it just got the update this morning on the phone for the camera and i must say so that the camera is working a lot better than it did when i first got the review unit it's had great improvements to it so okay so we got the camera the flash on the bottom here you have uh your first noise cancellation mic here on the bottom you got AT&T insignia and branding on there. And I'd like to take a moment to thank AT&T for graciously furnishing us this review unit. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Um, the speaker grill. Now, it's a single speaker. It's very loud, very clear. Uh, I was quite surprised because I didn't think I, that, you know, the speaker being this tiny and on the top, that uh, it was going to be as loud as it is but it is very loud and actually it's clear even when you go up to like eight nine and ten on the volume so it was quite surprising but this was pretty clear and um you know it's not an htc one but it's pretty good uh for playback on audio uh for music and both for a uh, video track uh, vi audio track on videos and stuff so that's pretty much what's on the back end I'm going to let you guys decide what color this actually is. Uh, the phone looks to me like it's either an olive colored or it looks like a uh, army issue green. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know how it's showing up to you all on camera, but uh, it looks like army issue green to me or like a or like a dark olive. That's what it looks like. And uh, it looks pretty cool because it has the... Uh, the uh, customizable uh, accentuation around the, the camera housing and stuff like that. And it also has it on the side buttons and everything like that. So it's pretty cool looking. Um, and uh, I think the best thing about the phone, one of the best things is that you can customize it any way that you want to do it, uh, which is which is a pretty big thing now with, tele with phones coming out, uh, color, color variations and uh getting you uh, to interact with uh, choosing your own style of phone and stuff. So I think they're starting off with colors first, but I think in the future you might actually be able to, you know, actually pick maybe one of these days what's inside your phone battery-wise, processor-wise, and so on and so forth. Uh, we're not, I don't think we're too far out from it. So uh, on the top of the phone, you have your second noise cancellation mic that's up there. Hopefully you all can see it. Uh, your standard... Uh, 
three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Um, got your little dimple there. Say when you're holding the phone, some people rest their thumb or their, their finger in there. Uh, nice curvature here on the design. So the aesthetics of the phone is pretty good. Has a nice curve there. Uh, on the uh, bottom part here, you have your uh, standard micro USB uh, connector. And that's obviously for charging and uh, syncing your phone. I'm not quite sure if you could, it also doubles as the HDMI out. Uh, I apologize if I don't have the information right. I would assume that it does. Uh, but if it doesn't, uh, I guess I'll stand corrected. But uh, that's your charging point and your data syncing uh, port. On this side of the phone, you have your SIM tray card slot. Uh, this phone takes a nano SIM. So I think this is uh, the, only the second phone that I'm aware of that actually takes nano SIM, SIM technology. Uh, the only other phone obviously being the iPhone, uh, the iPhone 5, the 5C and the 5S uh, are the ones with the uh, nano SIM cards. So this is, uh, I believe the first Android phone, Android powered phone that has a uh, nano SIM card. Uh, I, could, I could be wrong, but I think that it is. So that's pretty much that's all on that side. And then on this side, obviously, we have the uh, power on and off button and the uh, volume rocker. Now these colors here, it looks to me like it's a uh, metallic green color. And it, it's, it really really blends out pretty good with the phone. Uh, excuse me, that I launched Pandora by accident. <laughs> Okay, the, the color accentuations on the phone are pretty cool on the trim and stuff, so it really makes it stand out. Uh, I wouldn't put a case on the phone because uh, the, it has a nice textured back, and it's pretty solid in the hand, and I didn't feel at any time like I was going to drop the phone or anything, so um, that's pretty much, much on all four corners. On the front of the phone, we have a 2-megapixel front-facing camera. And it's capable of shooting a 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Over here, you have your uh, proximity sensor and your ambient light sensor. Pretty standard on uh, any kind of phone nowadays. Uh, on the bottom is another sensor. And that uh, triggers the uh, touchless controls. So when you put the phone in your pocket, uh, and this is covered, the phone won't go on when it's in your pocket. So it's, it only goes on when it's uh, when it's outside your pocket. And the screen will pop up and it'll show you like uh, Facebook notifications, any kind of notifications that you have it set for. Uh, and it'll show you how many emails you have, uh, things like that, calls, missed calls and stuff like that. And it's part of the whole uh, touchless control thing, which I'll get into that in another video. Uh, I plan on making another video for just the features part of the phone. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick walk around today. Let you know what was inside the box uh, and how the phone lays out, the specs and stuff. Um, we got here a uh, 1280 by 720 uh, uh, Super AMOLED, Super AMOLED uh, display. So that works out to be 316 uh, PPI, which is pixels per inch. Um, I know a lot of you might be saying, oh, it's a 720, 720p phone, you know, it's... You know 1080p phones are out now and stuff like that but this phone being 4.7 inches screen display for a 720p phone it's really sharp looking i mean the screen is really sharp not to say that that some of the other phones that are 720p aren't you know aren't don't have great screens but the contrast ratio on on the, on the display is excellent now, in my personal opinion, I think it's the best 720 uh, display that I've seen. Um, and it's got a pretty high pixel uh, density, you know, being 316 PPI. It's right just below the uh, the iPhone, which is obviously comes in at, I think, uh, 326. Uh, so it's right below that. And for this size screen, you know, it's excellent. The colors uh, dip a little oversaturated but I kind of like when the screen is like that and being that it's an AMOLED display I think that the, the colors show up on like that you know naturally 
that they'll just pop right off the phone. Uh, I know the camera that I'm using and uh, stuff doesn't probably do justice to, you know, the screen color, but, you know, I can attest that the, the screen is excellent. Uh, other notables on the phone, it's running Android 4.2.2. 4 uh, I haven't heard any words, any kind of upgrades coming down the pipeline for 4.3, but I'm sure that, you know, it's kind of like a Google phone indirectly. It's most definitely going to get an upgrade soon. Uh, like I said, I just got the camera upgrade earlier this morning for it. Uh, AT&T rolled that out. That was a pretty quick turnaround uh, for the fix on the camera, which is it's doing uh, wonders with it. The focus and stuff is much better. Clarity of the shots are much better. So, you know, thumbs up for them getting it out in a timely manner for you Moto X uh, owners and stuff like that. I'm sure you're enjoying that update. Uh, it took care of a couple of other minute issues with it, with the phone. Nothing major. Uh, kind of most of it was fixes. The major part of it was the uh, the camera update. So um, it's got a 2200 milliamp battery. Um, the phone is closed. Okay, so it's not removable. The battery is not removable. Uh, it doesn't have uh, a, an a uh, an SD expansion slot, so you can't use additional storage on here. This particular model is a 16 gigabyte model. It also comes in a 32 gigabyte model. Um, for a lot of people nowadays, you know, it, it can go either way. A lot of people like to have the, uh, be able to take the battery out, take the back off, and be able to, you know, add more memory to it, uh, change out your battery. Some people don't mind it. You know, it doesn't matter to them. Uh, a lot of people can live off of just having 16 gigabyte phones uh, because, quite honestly, uh, nowadays, many people swap phones out within a year after they get them. A lot of people don't wait two years. Uh, even if they use it as an upgrade phone, they don't wait two years to get another phone. So, you know, that's your own personal taste. But for the battery life on here is pretty good. Uh, I ran about... I don't know, just under 14 hours with the phone. And that's like uh, moderate to heavy usage. So, um, and that's basically about it. Um, the processor, sorry I didn't mention the processor. Um, it's running on a uh, Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon 1.7 gigahertz uh, S4 Pro pros processor, dual core. Um, it's like an older processor uh, series, but it's still relevant, uh, especially in uh, in a phone like this. I think it's uh, the entire phone has been optimized. Uh, my experience with the phone working with it is very quick and snappy. Uh, no lag that I can see. I don't have a lot of stuff on the phone per se, but uh, I, I did add about 12 apps to it so far and a couple of games. Uh, I've done a fair amount of surfing, playing the games and stuff like that. I've had uh, it multitasking in the background, and I haven't had any issues where I had any lockups or lag. Uh, it's pretty smooth experience. Um, it's almost running like a pure Android phone. You know what I'm saying? There's not a lot of uh, Motorola stuff on there, per se. Uh, if I can go into the uh, menu there, you can see right there. I mean, the experience is just like, you know, running a regular pure Android phone. It's not a Nexus device by any stretch of the imagination, but it doesn't have a lot of overlays on it or, or pre-installed software or anything like that. Uh, so it's pretty much uh, almost like a pure Android experience. Um, it has uh, touchless controls, like I was mentioning earlier in the video um, and basically you could set it up to uh, so you can interact with Google Now. The Google Now services on this phone are a little bit more enhanced than they are uh, if you were using Google Now on a, on, a, on another Android phone. Uh, the phone is, uh, you, you don't have to use touchless controls. You know, you have an option whether to turn it on or not. Uh, but I use it and the phone is like always listening. So it's in a it's in an alert mode at all times. Uh, it it listens for that response, you know, when you say "Okay, Google now," and uh, it'll react to it. The reason why I don't have it 
uh, I don't have it set up now for the purposes of the video and stuff. So uh, you can set the t alarm clock, a time, uh, a schedule, an appointment uh, on a calendar, anything that you can interact with your ca calendar services. You can send an uh, email to somebody, a uh, text message. You can call somebody from it. So uh, there's a lot of things you could do. You could shut your alarm off when your alarm goes on. You don't have to physically hit the off button on the alarm. So uh, it does serve a purpose. It's not really uh, gimmicky per se. Um, I find myself using uh, actually uh, it a lot of times. Um, right now, this is my daily driver being that it's a re review unit and I was wanting to wait at least five or six days before I, I put it on video so I can, you know, about, so uh, I can go about talking about it. Uh, I just wanted to use it, uh, get familiarized with it and stuff like that. But overall, the experience with the phone is excellent. And I highly recommend it. Uh, I believe right now it's uh, $99.99 at, uh, on AT&T for the 16 gigabyte model and $199.99 for the uh, 32 gigabyte model. Uh, I've heard stuff that it might be going down even more than that uh, when we get closer to the uh, holiday season, especially around uh, Black Friday and stuff. I don't know what kind of sales are going to be running on the phone. And also the... Uh, you see the wallpaper here, which is the uh, the wood grain wallpaper. The actual uh, customization for the wood grain uh, for the Moto X is probably going to be available next month. Uh, so you'll be able to uh, get that as a as a back on your phone. Um, but overall, for a 4.7 inch uh, screen, and I had a 4.7 inch screen on my uh, HTC One, and uh, this actually feels a lot more slender than the HTC One in my hand here the HTC one is a little bit higher and I think a little bit wider uh, this has less bezel on the side I don't know if you can see that on the video but uh, right here it's about 10 a little bit over 10 millimeters thick so it's not an ultra thin phone but it's it's nice in the hand it doesn't feel too thick it doesn't have a lot of weight to it I think it's just under five ounces the phone on a whole and uh like i said if you get a chance go to your local at&t store and check it out it's a great device uh i'm sure being that it's under the you know the google flag it's gonna get its updates so you're not gonna have to worry about getting updates hopefully uh and um that's it just wanted to touch base with you guys give you a little show and tell on the phone and I appreciate your time. This is Ken, once again, from the AT&T Wolfpack. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thank you.